All right, let's look at this truss. Um, determine the force in each member. So, you know, sometimes it only asks for the force in one member, and you can be smart about where you start, how you get to that member, uh, but this is determine the force in, in every member. Um, I'm going to look at the whole free body diagram. All right, as if it was one large solid object. And I've got a rocker here, so I've got A, Y. And here there's a pin, so I've got C, X, and C, Y. So the whole free body diagram, if I sum the forces in the X direction, what are my axes? X, Y. Uh, let's see, I drew C, X plus 600. Uh, is that it? So C, X is negative 600. So uh, C, X is actually that way, 600. <clears throat> Summing the forces, so 600 that way, summing the forces in the y direction, <clears throat> ay minus 400 plus cy, that has two unknowns. So let me jump to summing the moments, probably want to sum the moments about c. All right, let me slow down here and sum the moments about c. c is my pivot point, cx goes straight through it, cy goes straight through it, but this 400 has a moment arm, here's its moment arm, there's its perpendicular moment arm perpendicular to the line of action of the force uh, and that distance would be three and this would create a counterclockwise which I always say is positive so positive 400 times three let's look at the 600 right here uh, and then we've got 600 times its moment arm of four creating also a positive moment and then we've got a y over there a y what is its moment arm is it four or is it six it says six, right? You want to choose the dimension that is perpendicular to the line of action of the force. And so this would be six right here. So moment arm would be six. And this would be a negative moment because, you know, kind of put a pin right there, put your finger right there at C, and AY would try to push that um, clockwise, which would be negative. All right, is that it? I think that's it. Set that equal to zero. And I would get uh, AY to be positive 600. It means I guessed correctly. Of course, that one I didn't. I couldn't have guessed incorrectly. And then plug that in up here. And be careful here. 600 minus 400 is positive 200. But then set this equal to zero, right? Move that to the other side. I would get CY negative 200, which means it's not up. It is down. All right, so let me maybe even clean this up. All right, so I've got negative uh, 200 down right there, 600 over right here, and 600 up right there. Okay, that was just prep work. I, I haven't even gotten to the real heart of the of the trust part of the problem, the method of the you know the method of joints that I'm about to do. Okay. All right, so let us do method of joints. Um, I think I could start at C or A. I think I could start at joint C or I could start at joint A because either of those joints only has two unknown members attached to them, right? Uh, I'm going to start at A. I'm going to start at A. So here's joint A. I have already solved for this rocker of 600 right there. Now, uh, I've got the force in member AB. Did it tell me what angle? No, but it told me three and four. Three by four. All right. Here, uh, then I've got the force in member AD. Notice that I guessed both of those to be in tension, right? Both of those are pulling at the joint. Uh, this is 3, 4, the, the hypotenuse is 5, so 3, 4, 5 um, angle. Now let me sum the forces in X and sum the force of Y. Sum the forces in X. FAD and the 3 fifths component of FAB is equal to zero. All right, can't solve, so let me jump to my next equation. Sum of the forces in Y. Uh, positive the um, FAB, the 4 fifths component of FAB, positive 600 equals zero. From this equation, I would get FAB is negative 750. All right, so FAB, what does that negative mean? That negative means I guessed wrong. Uh, I guessed tension, so it's in compression. So I'm going to... 7... 750 newtons compression. Uh, if you want to, you can come back over here 
and draw it the correct direction, but I'm not really going to be looking at your uh, joints, free body diagrams. All right, now I need to go back and plug this back into right here. Should I plug in the positive 750 or negative 750? Back when I drew this, I drew it the wrong direction. You know, I need to plug in this negative 750. In general, if you go, if you, if x comes out negative, and you're going backwards to an equation you've already written, you probably need to plug in that negative. Uh, 750, right? Does that make sense? Uh, but moving forward, now any other equation I write moving forward, I know the correct direction, so I won't have to plug in a negative 750. Moving forward, I know it, it, it is 750. It is that direction, okay? All right, but anyway, I'm going backwards to an equation I've already written. <laughs> plug in negative 750, be very careful, and, and please write equals zero, equals zero, so that you don't make a mistake on the math. It's just an equation right here. Plug in negative 750 times 3 divided by 5, I would get negative 450. So FAD minus 450 equals zero. FAD would be positive 450. I see way too many um, easy math mistakes with positives and negatives because they didn't write this equation is equal to zero. Go ahead and write that equation. It's equal to zero. All right, so FAD is 450. It came out positive. Positive means, I guess correctly, I guess tension. All right. Now I think I'm ready to jump to another joint. Now that we have solved, maybe even put like a check mark. We've solved for this one. We've solved for this one. Now I can jump to another joint. I can jump to D or B. Either of those only have two unknowns. I'm jumping to D. So let's go to D and draw a free body diagram of joint D. It has 600 that way. Um, I just saw for this one, so I know what that one is, and those two I don't know. Here we go to D. All right, I've got 600 that way. I saw for this one it was 450. This one it was to the right, but this one it's to the left because it's just tension. Tension is always pulling at every joint, right? 450 to the left. Uh, F, D, C, I don't know, but I know it's straight up. And F, B, D, I don't know, but I know its direction is at a 3, 4, 5. And I got that 3, 4, 5 just from these dimensions right here. Just from those dimensions right there. All right, and I'm ready to sum the forces now. Maybe draw my axes again. Now, that 450... You know, I, it's in tension. In general, tension I think about as positive. But when I'm summing the forces, remember, sum the forces according to axes. And so this is 450 to the left, so minus 450. Uh, FBD is to the left. The three-fifths component is to the left. Plus 600 is to the right and equals to zero. This is just an equation that equals zero. Um, you can define anything you want to be positive or negative, all right, as long as you stay consistent, as long as you stay consistent. So draw your axes, you know, if for some reason you wanted to draw X and Y that way, you could have. We'd all get the same answer. Stay consistent. Whatever you define as your axes, stay consistent with your axes, all right? I'm defining X and Y right here. Uh, that only has one unknown, so I think I can solve for F, B, C. F, um, sorry, this is not B, C, this is B, D. B, D, yeah, B, D, right there. F, B, D would come out to be positive 250. Positive means, I guess correctly, so it is 250 in tension. And then I can sum my forces in the Y direction. Uh... I just solved FBD, 250 tension, so it is, let's see, up the four-fifths component of 250 plus FDC is equal to zero, so FDC negative 200, so FDC is 200 newtons compression. It is actually pushing down on that joint. Box in 200 newtons compression, okay? And so I've solved now for this one and this one. I think I have one left. 
think I have one left. I could go to joint B. I could go to joint C. I go to both to double check. Uh, let me go to joint C real quick. Let me go to joint C up here. Uh, joint C. I already knew from the whole free body diagram that I have 600 right here and I have 200 right here. That was from the pin. That was from the whole free body diagram. All right. I just saw for FCD. FCD is 200 compression. So this one feels it 200 compressing right there. And then what is this one right here? You might could just tell by looking at it. Um, if I looked at the summing of the forces in the Y, good. It would still be equal to zero. Uh, you know, so anyway, I'm trying to solve for FBC right here. So summing the forces in the X direction, negative 600 minus FBC equals zero. FBC, negative, be careful here how, you know, you, you would get negative 600 as your answer. So FBC is 600 Newtons compression. That one you might could have just looked at by inspection. And you could have told me, what do I need in this blank spot? I need 600 compression. All right, so this is actually 600 that way and then this is what i'm looking for i'm looking for 600 newtons compression boxed in right there for bc 200 newtons compression boxed in for dc uh 250 tension for bd 750 compression for ab and 450 tension for ad and then i'm not looking at your free body diagrams i'm not looking at your drawings because that information boxed in tells me all the all everything i need to know about that, about those members, about those members. So let's take a step back and look back at what we did. We looked at whole free body diagram to find CX, CY, and AY, and then I looked at joint A to solve for those two unknowns, or, or FAD and AB. I jumped to joint D to solve for the two unknowns, FBD and FDC. Then I got to joint C to solve for the force in BC. Um, and I could... Um, Go to joint B just to double check that, but since I haven't used the equilibrium of joint B yet, I could jump to joint B to double check that everything should still equal zero. If it doesn't, made some mistake, you go back through and try to try to find it. All right.